If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question on your own before listening on. Before we begin to solve the problem, it might be helpful to draw a picture of the scenario. Make sure you pause the video at this point and take a look at what we've labeled before listening on. What we have are the two raindrops that are falling towards the ground. The one colored in black is the drop that has an altitude of 20 kilometers and then the blue one you can see has an altitude 25% of that which is 5 kilometers. And what we've done is we've labeled the density of air, the area of the drop, and then the speed of the drop. Notice that for the area of both drops we've used the area of a circle, pi r squared, and that's because the drops are assumed to be spherical. And we'll note that the speed of the lower drop was stated to be 25% that of the higher drop. You can go back and reread the question just to make sure that makes sense. And of course, the higher drop has a speed of 10 kilometers per hour, so that means the lower drop is going to be 25% of that value, or 0.25 times the 10 kilometers per hour. And if you multiply that, you get 2.5 kilometers per hour. So we can actually let the speed of the lower drop be 2.5 kilometers per hour. And then if we look at the radii of the drops, we have RH and RL. And the question notes that the diameter of the higher drop is 4 millimeters and that of the lower drop is 6 millimeters. So we're going to substitute in those values, respectively. So for the higher drop, we've actually substituted in 2 millimeters for the radius, because the diameter was 4 millimeters. And also for the lower drop, we took its diameter, which was 6, and cut it in half to make 3 for the radius. And the reason we bring this all up is because the drag force acting on these drops can be described by the following equation. We have the drag force equal to 1 half times a so-called drag coefficient times the density of air times the area of the object that's falling times the speed of the object squared. And if you look at this equation, and then back to the information that we listed, you can see that the density, area, and speed show up right next to each other, which is exactly what we've labeled in the picture. And of course, this equation holds true for both drops. So we can actually put subscripts of h to represent the equation for the higher drop. And then we can write the same equation for the lower drop. And then we look back at the question, which asks to find the ratio of the drag force on the higher drop to that on the lower drop. Well, of course, a ratio is a fraction. It just means to divide two quantities. So we're going to divide both sides of these equations. And when we divide d sub h by d sub l, we're going to get the ratio that the question is asking for. So here's that ratio. Dividing the right side is a little bit more complicated. But if you look carefully, you can see that the one halves are going to cancel. The c or drag coefficient was stated to be the same on, on both drops. So whatever the value of C is, it's the same. We can algebraically eliminate it. And then we can simplify the equation and just write the remaining terms. So here is the simplified equation. And now we just have to go in and plug in the value for each variable for both the higher drop and the lower drop. Remember, all that information was stated here. So we're going to carefully plug in all the values now and see what we've got. So here are all the values plugged in. You definitely want to pause the video and just make sure that we've put the value into the correct spot from each list of information. Also notice that we dropped the units just for the sake of clarity. It's going to turn out that all the units will cancel because all terms on top and bottom are being multiplied. So in that case, whatever units are on the top, as long as they're the same units on the bottom, they're going to cancel out. So we've omitted them, again, for clarity. If you look carefully, you can see that the pi's will actually cancel. And then you can just pick up your calculator and carefully compute this ratio. And we'll see what we get. We get approximately 2.03. And so we can see that the drag force acting on the higher drop is approximately two times the drag force acting on the lower drop. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and also subscribe to the channel. Remember, you can send in your own question to the email address shown on the screen, and I'll do my best to post a solution to it on YouTube.